My name is Jeremy Bora and uh, I work for Izu Logic. We are a fraud prevention and risk protection platform. Today we're going to run you through uh, a few of the uh, observations that we're making uh, about the African threat landscape and we will show you some real life examples of uh, threats that our customers are finding and how we can help you mitigate against them. Okay, so what we're going to cover is some background of the current challenges, some options for you to consider, uh, and obviously how we can help you. Uh, we will probably uh, put the demonstration to another time. We're happy to do that, uh, but time might not allow us to do that at the moment. So we're a company that's based in London. We have offices uh, around the world, uh, particularly in Australia, where we were formed. We also have offices in uh, the USA. We are about 10 years old now, which means that we have uh, good relationships with the platforms that we're trying to help uh, you um, remove threats from. We have about 100 customers as well in all verticals. So that could be finance, uh, we have travel, we have health, uh, we even have manufacturing in uh, in our customer list what uh, we're about is uh, we're a focused and specialized vendor brand protection fraud prevention and anti-phishing solutions so what that means uh, from a business perspective we can help you with compliance uh, privacy laws reg regulatory alignment technically the solutions break down into uh, things like phishing prevention malware protection uh, brand protection something called data loss recovery, which is where we will actually show you where your data has been lost and how we, uh, how you can, well, in some instances recover it, but in other instances uh, work around the fact that this data has been lost. Obviously, as part of some of the regulations, you need to show where you have lost data and what you are doing about it. Um, if you're talking about dark web threats, uh, it's not always possible to actually recover cover that data by the very nature of the uh, uh, the place where the data is held so uh, we can help you help give you ideas around what you can do about that uh, as you can see at the bottom there we talk about uh, takedown services so that is where we actually will remove threats uh, that are sitting there against you so before we get into more of that we just thought we'd highlight some of the current challenges that we see in Africa <coughs> So the, this is from the uh, South African newspaper called the Daily Maverick, and it's highlighting the fact, and this was uh, back in February, that uh, Africa uh, is a prime target for cyber criminals. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the days of the 419 scams are well known now, but uh, there is also uh, threats that are being found that are, are particularly pertinent to uh, the continent and that uh, there is a, it is challenging for uh, the continent to actually have good uh, responses to those threats and mitigate against them. Here is another one where uh, this is from cybersecurity intelligence. Um, basically what it highlights here is that some of the, the attacks that are being seen in Africa actually result in uh, the internet being turned off completely. Uh, clearly, uh, the, the example at the bottom there, Ethiopia, something like that. And then eventually they will put out posts that will drive people to their target website, okay, which could then infect them with malware or with phishing. Okay, so unfortunately, a lot of the social platforms like LinkedIn and, and uh, the others, they actually help by shortening the URLs that the people are going to click on thereby masking where the target site is. So instead of seeing uh, standardbank.nz, um, they will actually have it shortened that, so you don't actually know where it's got going. And by the time that happens, it's too late. You could have been infected. Okay, so, but the SAT people, they will use, um, sorry, they will use uh, quizzes and things like that to, uh, educate you and hopefully stop you falling for these things. But obviously with that, they do not do, they do not remove anything. This is an educational process. Um, after you've been educated, they will, uh, those threats will still exist. It's purely educational. The next 
uh, option around email around phishing defense is obviously email so as we said lots of email is uh, used for phishing attacks it's it's the primary vector that they use for phishing attacks it's it's up there in the 80 90 percent range um what the email hygiene platforms are doing and there's there's lots of those to choose from is they will look at um the inbound email and analyze it for potential uh, phishing elements okay some of them will even follow the links in sandboxes and they will see what happens okay um there was uh when this sort of market first started up there was a a common uh, piece of news that went around that the sandbox processes would click a link within an email and wait for 10 seconds for the the threat to see if the threat uh, actually uh, it, uh ran on the in the sandbox and of course all the phishing guys then used to do was make their threat idle for maybe a minute and um, then they'll get around it that way. But the, the phishing guys will use email a lot, as everyone knows. So what the, the email hygiene platforms are doing is dealing with inbound emails. Again, it's typically inbound emails for the enterprise. It's not necessarily protecting the customer's customer. Okay, so um, there is also a standard called DMARC, which is helping in uh, protection for business email compromise. So DMARC is a standard where you actually uh, ensure that emails to a certain domain are only legitimate. By that, I mean you get to a point where if anyone impersonates your domain, so standardbank.co.za, that domain, they will drop fake emails from that domain okay which obviously is a good thing but of course it doesn't deal with the example here fakebank at gmail.com it does not and cannot frankly deal with that um, what goes on before the domain at sign it is frankly impossible to deal with because anyone can create a from name with any name in it and you cannot analyze every email for every combination to see if this is a fake email address okay so dmark helps you up to a point and it doesn't necessarily help you for your customer's customer okay the email people are also unlikely to uh, deal with media or apps so just to cover off the app point uh, what the bad guys are now doing is they're taking people's applications mobile applications and reverse engineering them and putting a lot of malware into them or adding in extra fields to get pins or credit card details uh, directly in the app. And what they'll typically do is they will try and launch that app back onto the official stores, the iTunes or Google Play. Um, this has been seen to be successful on Google Play, not so much on iTunes, but of course, they, there are other sites where they can host them. So in the Far East, for example, there it is common to have a third party app store site because Google Play certainly um, a while ago wasn't really accessible in places like China uh, and so forth. So there were third party hosted stores for them. So there are sites called APK Monk and lots of others like that where these apps are legitimately put. But of course, within the, the legitimate apps, there are also fake ones. So the, social, the email hygiene platforms don't really look at social media or applications, and also they do not remove anything. So you've got the training people, you're educated. You've got the email people, you're blocked, but the threat still exists for people who haven't been trained or, or aren't sitting behind an email hygiene platform. So that's essentially leaves you with the third area, and this is essentially where we would come in. So a, a platform like ours, uh, identifies the target of all of these attacks okay whether that be a fake app a fake website um, a um, social media or blog post whether it be on the surface web whether it be on the dark web and we we will find and show you a specific customer what is actually going on that could be good and bad so what i mean by that is wherever you're represented on the internet we will find information about you so this can be used for for 
positive things. So for example, we could find where you're being referred to in a positive light, so in a news blog, for example, but also in a negative light where people might be complaining about your service or complaining about uh, something that's happened with their experience with you. So we will highlight all of those things and will allow you to take action. Clearly, if it's bad, then we will remove it. Uh, we can do that automatically or we can do that with uh, your agreement. Um, if it's good, we can obviously highlight that and you can then take a, an action about, you know, uh, contacting customers to thank them for their response or contacting them to help them with their, their challenge that they're facing. OK, so um, don't just think that you can use these platforms for removing bad things. Um, we look at all aspects of impersonation, whether that be on social media, whether that be uh, spam. We, we also can deal with spam, although, of course, uh, the email hygiene platforms can probably do that just as well. Uh, we will look at sites. Um, we will look at um, dark web uh, sites, which are notoriously difficult to remove. So we will actually impersonate bad people. We will infiltrate those sites and then we'll find information for uh, you and then you can act upon it. So the, the most typical example of that is around credit card data. Uh, obviously, if uh, uh, banks are breached, that credit card data becomes a, uh, a good source of revenue for them. They're often set up just to sell that data on, not necessarily exploit it. So we can find where this data is residing and we will give you as much information as we can give you without necessarily buying that information. Clearly, we do not want to actually be funding the very thing that we're trying to stop, but we will find where we can this information and give it to you to deal with. So, for example, if we found a stolen credit card and the only data we would find without removing or without buying that data would be bin number, uh, surname, zip code, uh, credit limit and expiry date, but not the actual credit number, uh, that could give you you a group of people or maybe an individual where you could cancel that card and reissue. Okay, so you might have experienced this over the last few years where you get reissued a card without your current card going out of uh, date. That could be because that bank has noticed something about your account and they're proactively cancelling and reissuing. Okay, so that's the sort of information we can provide to you. Um, Obviously, if we're removing the threat, we're dealing with not just employees challenges, but also the customer's customers issues as well. Because once the threat's gone, it doesn't matter who might fall, fall um, over, over that site or, or over that social media post. So we're actually removing the threat. So I guess in summary, all of these things are good ideas. We're not saying that we're the silver bullet. I assume that the security awareness training people would also say that they're not the silver bullet either. Um, but this is the sort of uh, strategy that you might adopt if you're trying to deal with the phishing problem, which leads on to fraud, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm just seeing if there's questions are down the side. Okay, so just before I hand over to Benny, um, I'm just seeing if there's a question here. Those also cover phishing attacks that have no deal that has to deal. Do we deal with phishing attacks that have to deal with text messages? Yes. So do we deal with text messages? So that's smishing, SMS phishing. Um, yes, we do. So the way we, that we deal with that is through creating honeypots. So we seed our numbers and email addresses into places that are used for these sorts of attacks. And then when we get attacked, we then pass that on to the telco to remove uh, or to block that number. Um, OK, um, obviously, Benny might have a few technical challenges, so uh, hopefully you can still hear me and I'll, I'll carry on for this. So um, these are a few real life examples uh, that we've actually seen for customers. So would you believe that a chicken farmer has been fished? Um, it wasn't something that was high on my list of verticals that might experience fishing. Um, this is on a, on a site in Nigeria where a company is essentially selling eggs and chickens to Kentucky Fried Chicken, to lots of 
lots of ma uh, known brands. They're a massive chicken farmer and they are selling, uh, as I said, their chickens and eggs to uh, industry, if you like, to the, the fast food outlets and things like that. Um, so what someone has done on Facebook is created uh, a, a fake page. So here they've got um, contact details for where you can ring them about deliveries, about how many uh, eggs or chickens you require. Uh, it looks like a fairly legitimate site. They have, you know, that's a picture of the real life uh, container from the real company. And, but it's totally fake. Um, in fact, if I was in the chicken market, I might have fallen for this one myself because they've done obviously done a good job of recreating everything about this this person's uh, farm that they were targeting. So you know, a map, uh, details. Um, they talk about COVID nineteen. You know, they're trying to in, in, infer that they are serious a serious business, but yet, um, unfortunately, fake. So um, we actually through our portal, and this is a snapshot of our portal, we will find and highlight where these things actually occur. Okay, so within our portal, we, we create incidents, and those incidents highlight exactly what the problem is. We allow the, we communicate with the customer what we're doing about that threat. So in this case, we would obviously be working with um, uh, Facebook to remove that threat, and then we'll take it down. This is a, a different example. This is about um, an impersonation of Domino's. So Domino's Pizza, everybody knows about those. Um, this is where they have ha someone has created a fake site for Domino's and a fake app. So on the next slide, you'll see that they have got an actual, they've gone to the business of creating uh, a view of how to um, order uh, vouchers to give you free pizza. Okay, so this is part of possibly a bigger campaign where voucher, voucher fraud essentially is a growing market within its own uh, space. Um, this is where people are uh, essentially offering free things in return for certain uh, information. That information could be, could include, you know, we're going to offer you a free X and all you have to do is pay for postage. Okay, that sort of idea. Um, we actually had an, uh, uh, um, uh, quite an unusual experience with a, one cus customer in Europe. They created an application for booking tours around their factory. They were an alcohol manufacturer and they wanted to uh, offer people the ability to come and see a tour of their factory. And at the end, they hoped they would buy some alcohol. Okay, so, and they thought that by creating an app, they would get onto the people's phone, they could then push promotions to them, et cetera, et cetera. So a legitimate reason. What someone had done was they had downloaded that application, reverse engineer it to ask for a booking fee, a small two euro booking fee. So it wasn't enough to put people off. It could be a legitimate reason to ask for a booking fee, you know, just to book a free tour, you know, maybe. Um, but of course, by offering that app, one, they got onto your phone, which is a threat in itself. And two, they would actually obviously get your credit card details for a, a two euro transaction, which of course they could probably turn into a hundred euro transaction or a thousand euro transaction. So these sorts of uh, approaches where free things are offered are often used to, um, you know, attack people sort of indirectly. Okay. Um, if you notice on this one, for example, there is also feedback right at the bottom here. Thank you very much. I got my pizza, et cetera, et cetera. So they, they go to extraordinary lengths to actually attack people and get the, um, get the information they need or obviously uh, get financial uh, impact against your you as a person. Um, this one is uh, from a bank where they've uh, taken um, taken over the online uh, activity. So there's man in the middle, man in the browser attacks and all those sorts of things. So here there, there's various options or various reasons for them to do this. Okay, um, often they can do this because as you can see on this screenshot here, they're asking for your account number when you log in. You know, no bank would do that legitimately, but they have 
uh, gone to the trouble of creating a phishing site and then asking for extra details. So it's it's traditional phishing if there is such a thing. OK, so again, that came into our portal uh, when we did a scan for this customer and we could then work with the hoster. We have good relationships with the hoster and then we can have that site taken down. And in this sort of business, it's all about details and speed, how quickly you can find the details, as in, can you find just apps or can you find social media? Can you find deep web uh, threats? Can you find obviously traditional phishing sites? And But then how quickly you can remove them because essentially the quicker you remove them, the more likely it is that the hackers are gonna move on to somebody else, okay? Um, I think our time is probably up, but um, just to see if there's any more questions. Um, yeah, so uh, Satir is saying that impersonation of sites is very common in Kenya right now. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We uh, we have just signed up a, a bank in Kenya uh, to protect them against uh, these sorts of threats. So um, you um, you will suffer that. It's it's so easy for them to do. It costs them little. Obviously, email is free. Um, so they will literally target countries and target one by one. And hence, if you have a solution that can make it harder for them to actually attack you, essentially what will happen is they'll go on to the next guy. It, it becomes a business, literally. That they they plan an attack, they they plan how they're going to do it. They will do it very quickly. You can buy phishing as a service now. You can get, have hosted offerings that include phishing attacks. Um, you can buy that from other people, or obviously you can create your own. And what we're all about is finding the threats quickly. You know, by all means, be part of a three pronged attack with the security awareness training people, the email people, uh, but also not just think that just because things are being blocked or because you're being educated, the threat has gone away because it hasn't gone away. It's still sitting there until it's actually removed. And that's sort of where we come in. Um, so I think our time is up. I'm sure uh, Jerry will tell me. Um, and sorry about the few technical glitches, but uh, hopefully you got the, the gist of what we're, uh, we were talking about. Um, obviously, if you want to find out more information, then um, we have various partners around Africa. Um, obviously, we can work with you and, and the partner to help uh, come to a, uh, a solution that will fit your requirements. Um, or you can look at more information on our website, which is izulogic.com. So thanks very much. Jerry, back to you.